help video for the graph analysis, short-term climate change, changes in climate. This is just like the other one that you did. You're going to analyze these graphs, use your graphical analysis skills, graph analysis skills, and you're going to answer some questions about it. On the actual worksheet, it tells you to open the assignment on Canvas. That's because the worksheet does not have images on it. You need to look at the images. They're on Canvas, better in color. Uh, you can also zoom in on them on Canvas, which is nice. So it's just straight uh, forward. I want you to develop the skills to read the data and make your own judgments about it because that's all that scientists do. We just observe the world, collect data on it, and then try to figure out what it all means. That way we can hopefully maybe predict something or see what's going to happen in the future, etc. It's very important that you're able to do these things because instead of you relying on some social media or some other person or kid or adult telling you what's going on in the world, you can actually determine what's going on yourself. You can look at the data yourself and know what's going on. So something that's important about this is that this graph here has something on the y-axis called temperature anomaly. And I'm going to explain to you what that is. This obviously is how much methane is in the atmosphere by parts per million. This is how much CO2 is in the atmosphere, parts per million. You know, the dates here. But this one says temperature anomaly. So what the heck does that mean? What the temperature anomaly actually is, is that scientists take the average temperature over a certain amount of time, and then they compare other years to that average. So for this graph, I believe it was from like 1950 to 1960, they took the average. And let's just say that the average global temperature was like 72 degrees Celsius over 10 years. So that's the anomaly. That's the average that they took between 1950 and 1960. Then what they do is they figure out how much different the temperature was in every other year they have plotted here compared to that year. That's why the numbers on the graph look like this, negative 5.5 to 1.5. If you didn't know what the anomaly was, you'd say, wait, they're saying that the temperature in 2020, the average temperature was 1 degree Celsius? That doesn't make any sense. It definitely wasn't. That's because they're talking about it was 1 degree, almost 1 degree Celsius higher than the average between 1950 and 1960. So that means that in 2020, it was about, let's say, 73 degrees Celsius, so it's up a little bit. And something like, let's say, 1900, somewhere between negative, so it was about, sorry, that's a three. So in 1900, it was about negative 2.5 less, so it was like 71.75 degrees Celsius. All right, that's what the temperature anomaly is. Okay. Now, a couple other things that you might be wondering is this says ice cores in Manoa Loa. In Hawaii, they record concentrations of gases. And so they've start, they started doing that accurately. They have accurate data for this one, at least, from 1980. For CO2, they have it from 1958. So this is like super, super accurate, definitely right data. This other stuff the lighter red and lighter blue is taken from ice cores. As you can tell, it, it pretty much matches up right where, I mean, Manawa Loa matches up right where the ice cores left off. Um, but this is just where they're getting their data from. The goal of science is to give you everything as transparent as possible to show you where things come from. That way you can identify where there may be mistakes and you can determine how accurate it is. The only other thing I want to talk about in this video about this is sending so these questions. Talk about correlation and causation, and I ask you here at the end um, if you think that there is any kind of relationship, a causation between the graphs that you see, between the temperature and atmospheric um, gases graphs. Now that is based off of what you know about greenhouse gases, what you learned before. All right, and I want you to explain a lot. We're getting to the end of the unit, and I want you to. Try to make an argument. Try to support your argument with things that you think are true. Don't just say, no, I don't think there is, or yes, I think there is. Tell me why you think that. My goal as a science teacher isn't to tell you, hey, this is what is happening. Believe it. It's for me to say, this is what we believe is happening, and here is the data, so that you can look at the data and determine whether or not you agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. But you should make an argument that is based on evidence to why you do or do not agree with me. 
I try to make all of my judgments off of the most accurate evidence that's out there, not just off my opinion. If you need help, just ask me.